Today we're going to take an updated look at the Bell Custom 500 helmet. This first arrived here in the UK back in 2014 following a very long and patient wait for the US brand to release us a ECE approved version of their best-selling US helmet. That is to say something that's road legal in Europe and in the UK. And we were slightly worried that in achieving that approval they'd have to make concessions by making the helmet perhaps a bit bigger and just not quite what it was over in the US with the DOT approved variant. But that wasn't the case, it was exactly what we were hoping it would be. So it's not been a surprise therefore that it has become one of the best-selling helmets in our lineup too. So having had it for five years we've had a lot of chance to get feedback from customers and really learn more about it and now seems a good point to tell you any little additions and revisions to the helmet throughout its lifespan. So the Bell Custom 500 really caters to pretty much anybody who's after an open face helmet given that the price range spans from the low 100 mark all the way up to nearly 400 for the very latest carbon fiber 2020 colorway. So something for pretty much everybody assuming you're after an open face. Of course that's a whole separate debate. We do often get a lot of comments on open face helmets about riding with them and that's a review that we will do open face versus full face later in the year. But for now we're just going to proceed on the basis that this is a review about this wonderful helmet and we're going to look through the features that are consistent across the range and really point out anything about the individual variants as well. So one thing I'd like to highlight first of all that I think makes them so popular is the fact that Bell have gone and produced five different shell sizes within the sizing range. Sizing runs from extra small to 2XL, which is normal for most helmets, but what you generally find with open face is that you have maybe one or two shell sizes that the manufacturers produce, and that is the actual shell itself versus the thickness of the lining that creates the combination to give you small, medium, large, and so on. And really having more shells creates more cost, there's more that needs to go into the approval and the red tape and actually producing the end product. And it's therefore rare to see more than a couple of shell sizes within the range. And if that's the case, you maybe say are a medium and you're on the verge and that might get you into the smaller of the two shells. It might look fantastic and neat and compact. But if you're a large and you need to go up, you might suddenly jump up massively into a much bigger shell that caters for the large to 2XL head shapes. And that's not ideal. What Bell have done by giving us five is pretty much one single shell size for every head size in their range. And that means keeping a proportional size to your head size as compact as possible. And as consumers, that's what we want. We want the best looking helmet that does the safety that it needs to. And Bell have catered for that by producing so many different shells. So that's a really, really great starting point. And the aesthetics, as much as people may say it needs to be first about safety, aesthetics do play a very important point when it comes to the stuff that we choose to buy, given the competition on offer. And Bell do not sacrifice when it comes to the performance. So that's a given with this brand. So what we have is a fiberglass shell in the sort of standard custom 500, if you like, and a carbon fiber variant in the premium version that's up nearer the sort of three to 400 pound mark. In the fiberglass variants, at the £119 price point, if you go off the UK price list for 2020, you will get the standard colorways in the gloss and the matte black, as well as the gloss white. And that will get you the helmet, the bag, and no frills. If you want the anything that says deluxe in the title, then you are looking for something that comes with essentially a bundle that includes the visor, the peak, as well as a little bag that says Bell that's made of faux leather that has a suede interior. So a nice little kit to get with a marginal saving to be had when you add all the three together. And then you're jumping off about 40, 50 pounds depending on the colorway. And there's a few in between as well, special editions. Bell do like to review and renew their colorways pretty much every single season. And they do a lot of collaborations with particular artists or particular uh, custom bike builders. And that keeps it relevant and interesting. And we do a lot of the Custom 500 range and you often see helmets within our range slightly discounted and that's usually because we're clearing out a previous season's colorway. They're all equally good, it's not because one is better than the other. When looking at the lower part of the pricing spectrum for the Custom 500 is around the £100 mark, getting a fiberglass helmet is a really good point indeed. Most of the competition will likely not be, it will be some kind of thermoplastic and that's inferior in essence to what you get with a fiberglass shell in terms of lightness and protection. So that's already something the Custom 500 does win over a lot of the competition at that price. And then of course if you're going to go up for the carbon fiber variants you are going to get marginal weight savings but you're going to get a helmet that really lasts longer as well because carbon fiber doesn't degrade in the same way in things like UV sunlight compared to other materials. So that gives it a bit more of a lifespan. In front of us here, we've just got a selection to show you. We have the RSD Check It, which is one of the special edition colorways coming in at a mid price point. We have the Black Flake, which is something we're actually doing a wonderful clearance deal on at present. And we also have the Jaeger, which is a carbon fiber variant from 2019 season. So there's so many colors to choose from. The actual fit of the helmet is something that's worth noting as well. So these are, I would say, an intermediate head shape. 
And at the default, I would think in most of the helmets we do is probably classed as intermediate oval. But I would say if you are overtly oval, then these are not the best fit. I have more of an oval head shape, and although the sizing is true to the size guide, it does just push slightly on my head at the front, which is less than ideal, but if you give it a little while to wear in, it will become far more comfortable very quickly. But I would say anyone with a round head, fine. Anyone with an intermediate head, fine. An intermediate oval, probably fine too, but overtly towards the oval end of the head shape spectrum, like this guy, then you're probably gonna find it's just not quite right. There may be better brands elsewhere, but this caters for the majority of customers' heads that we see. Uh, the sizing is true to the size guide, so 57, 58 being a medium, that's spot on. We can verify that with the data that we've compiled over the years. The weight of the helmets, pretty much consistently, and interestingly, the carbon fiber ones are very marginally lighter, but only very slightly. Uh, you're looking around about 1,000 grams, essentially, for the different ones in the mediums that we have here. We weighed them ourselves, and that's with the linings and everything. And don't get too hung up on the weight. That's pretty lightweight, and anything lighter than that, really, it's a marginal saving. You're not really going to notice. So you get an awful lot of premium quality features with the helmet. The lining itself is a really nice detail point. You get this leather appearance to the front of it with the perforations on it, giving it a premium look, but you don't get the leather interior. And that's actually a good thing because leather isn't the most practical lining to a helmet. It can become very hot and unpleasant in warmer conditions. You have this suede feel antibacterial lining, which is great for moisture wicking and temperature regulation. The only downside is it's not removable. And this is something some people will get quite hung up on, which is fair enough if you want your helmet to do that. There's pluses and minuses to it. The plus point is that it remains really nicely in place. And some of the removable helmet linings on open faces tend to get pulled around a lot. They tend to dislodge and they actually tend to kind of wear in quite quickly, I find. Whereas this one, I think will have a longer lifespan to it. It's still perfectly possible to wash it. You literally just chuck it in a sink and wash the fabric itself and wait for it to dry, but it's slightly less practical than a removable lining would be in the maintenance respect. The quality of the finishes we have is really fantastic with the Bell helmets. Just another point to note, on the earlier ones, this was a removable label with the Bell logo. It no longer is. It's something that's lacquered into the finish of the paintwork. But the branding, apart from that, is very, very subtle and most brands are going to give you something there by way of branding. There's a double deering fastening system, which is the safest and most secure way of doing up the helmet. And we have a wide range in stock and available at urbanrider.co.uk. So if you've got any experience with this helmet, if you've ridden with it, if you know someone with it, if there's anything you can add to the conversation on it, then please leave that in the section below because it's so much better for other riders who are thinking about it to hear from people who've had experience using it. So thank you for taking the time to do that. And leave us any other questions and comments as well. We love hearing from you guys. And do remember to subscribe to our channel to be the first to find out about the world's finest riding gear. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye.